But I felt, I always feel like skating, I'm a lot more free, mm. a lot more, like it's a lot more easy to maneuver and it's a lot more fun. And then cycling gives you a bad back ache, butt ache. I was like, <laughs> I don't like this sport, right? And I asked my friends, I was like, so what would you recommend? They said, what is your budget? I'm like, no, just recommend a few. Lah. Why do you need to know my budget? They're like, girl, there is a wide range depending on what you want. I had no idea how much these things cost. Mm. I was like, I don't know, a thousand dollars. And then they started laughing. They're like, a thousand dollars? You want to buy a road bike for, th-? I was like, so disproportionate. So you couldn't have gone for a bigger size for the bike. Look at the, look at how, how high the seat post is. It can't even fit in my, my frame. My so camera's frame. a few, so I don't, to be honest, right? And this one maybe like viewers can, I'm actually very curious to hear your comments and, and viewers thoughts as well, right? I'm, I'm actually not sure. Right. <laughs> to, my, to be sure, I'm not sure because this was what I was advised based on like my height and stuff. Okay. But I think people don't realize how disproportionate my body actually is. Yeah. Like when I, when I, it's, it's to the point where I meet people when I'm sitting down and people think I'm very petite. <laughs> right? How people, tall are you? I'm 171. Okay. So your bike is too small. Oh my gosh, you see. <laughs> oh my gosh. Please let me know if you think my bike is too small. I'm really very open to like comments and suggestions. Did you get special price because you are jits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode. Today we've got a uh, local celebrity, Jade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel so weird when people say that, but hi. Uh, sh- should I do the intro for you? Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> okay, it's so good. Jade, uh, I, I, I get a lot of viewers outside of Singapore. So uh, Jade is, uh, she, she used to be a, a, a um, actress, a, a model. Am I missing something else now? You're a host? Yes, I mean, I started out as a model when I was like 14, mm. right? That was like quite by accident. And then, yeah, I stumbled into TV where I did... Uh, well, I did act, I hosted or presented shows, and I was also in radio. Wow. Yeah. So you in radio? Yeah, I've done time? the whole gamut, you know, basically. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm very nervous, guys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I told, I, I was telling, uh, telling Jay, like, wow, Jay, actually a bit scared, like, cause you know, you know, she was telling me, oh, so this is the close up cam, that's the big no. camera. Like, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, occupational has. I just need to know where you want me to look. But yes, don't be nervous. Uh, thank you, thank you for yes. me. Actually, I was in touch with your uh, PR. Should I call it PR manager? Yes, my manager. For almost a year ago, <laughs> and now we are finally doing this. I'm very excited. Has it really been a year? It's almost been a hey, year. No, it's also this guy is super busy. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry to have rescheduled so many times but then my manager was like he's very busy he can only see you like this like four months later I was like dude dude so the, it's not just me okay this guy is also like in demand that's all I'm saying and, uh, thank you <laughs> but Jade actually just came back from China uh, just what 1am you said you were back here yeah I landed at 1am last night so wow. I have a I have a live streaming business and so I'm I mean this is my first time to China for the business but usually we work a lot out of Italy and out of uh, Korea mm. yeah so that's my main businesses okay wow okay uh, <laughs> yeah. and in terms of cycling uh, you know, you, you have your own YouTube channel and that's where I started picking up and following all of your content. Yes. And wow, you, you are quite accomplished as, a, as an athlete. Uh, should I call you an athlete? Wow, I like, <laughs> I like the things. So, I mean, I think that like, as a little girl, everyone had things they wanted to be, right? I, I mean, one of the things I really would have loved to be where I've been a professional athlete. I don't care which sport. Mm. Obviously, I never realized it, but I mean, I enjoy sports and I enjoy being outdoors. So what do you do besides cycling? I mean, I use, I play netball competitively. I still do. And then I used to wakeboard. Well, I mean, I still do, actually. <laughs> I skate. I still do. Uh, I like to hike. I, I mean, I do more sports. Like, I think the only things I don't really like are racket sports because I'm rubbish at mm. them. Yeah. Just like my wife, I think I pass her the keys, right? Like a catch and then, you know, wow, the keys just fly everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> catch my keys. Yeah, catching stuff is okay, but racket stuff is a different thing. You I tried think. them? Yeah, I've tried badminton, tennis, really rubbish at them. So people always say, oh, you do a lot of sports, you go at all of them. I'm like, no, no, no. Just the balancing <laughs> ones. Balancing and ball sports, I think, okay. But yeah. like racket sports. <laughs> what have you not tried? It sounds like you've tried everything. Anything that you would like to try? Actually, I was supposed to try diving. So I actually booked a, a trip to Bali. When you, when I texted you, right, mm. about this, I, I booked a trip to Bali to try diving for the first time because I'm kind of scared of being under the water. Mm. And then I talked to a few friends. I just booked the trip. I didn't, didn't check anything, right? Then mm. I talked to a few friends. They're like, are you mad? Nobody learns diving in Bali because it's kind of dangerous and it's not very beginner friendly. So anyway, I switched up and I decided to climb Mount Agung and go cycling instead. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about cycling. Yes. Uh, being a cycling uh, yes. channel, channel. How did it all start? Quite my accident, to be honest, right? I 
I've been able to cycle since I was probably six. My grandmother taught me, my late grandmother. Mm. Very grateful to her. She made it, actually when I look back, like she made it seem so easy to learn how to cycle. I remember one day I was just cycling. She took off the four, the two training wheels. She's like, just keep pedaling. And she gave me a, she ran alongside me and she gave me a huge push. And then that was it. Hmm. Like literally that's why how I remember getting into cycling. When I was in primary school, we were on a school trip in, at the beach. And I remember I was cycling, right? And I turned to look for my friends because they were kind of slow. And then I don't know how I lost balance and I fell off the bike. <laughs> and so I fractured my arm, like, okay. which is why my left wrist is smaller than my right wrist to okay. this day. Right. So I fractured my wrist then. And I was like, this cycling thing is rubbish. Uh, at the same time, when my wrist healed, I started inline skating. Or I, I used to roller skate. And then I switched to inline skating when it was like the in thing, when I was about nine. And then I've always much preferred skating. So every time I would cycle with friends, I would be on my skates and they would be cycling. And I guess I had a slight phobia from the accident. But I felt, I always feel like skating, I'm a lot more free, mm. a lot more, like it's a lot more easy to maneuver and it's a lot more fun. And then cycling gives you a bad back ache, butt ache. I was like, <laughs> I don't like this sport, right? So I never, I never touched a bicycle, you know, until yeah. like um, COVID happened. And I was still skating and I picked up skateboarding then as well. But then a friend of mine said, you want to try my road bike? So I tried and then I was like, no lies, I'm not interested in cycling. And then, um, but then I tried it, right? And my goodness, I can just say that the road bike is what made me interested in this sport. Mm. Because cycling like a normal bike, like you can't hit that kind of speeds, but then on the road bike, I was like, whoa, mm. this thing can go so fast. I mean, I like speed. Yeah. So I think that's why like, so then I was like kind of interested. Then I started trying a few, a few of my friends are very, very kindly, let me try their bikes. Right, so I tried a few friends' bikes and I was like, you know, I think, I think I'm ready to buy my first road bike. Because mm. right? I was like, this road bike thing is so different to like any other bicycle that I've ever tried. Um, yeah, that's when I was like, okay, I was, I'm in the market to buy my first road bike. <laughs> I've got a question though. Yes. Did you even know that there were different types of bikes, like road bikes, I did, mountain I did. bikes, and falling bikes? I did, but I just, because I never tried it, right? I always just thought that the riding experience would be more or less similar, right? It's two wheels, you pedal. And like I said, because I was, I mean, I've always been very heavy into skating. Mm. All my scars are from like, I used to do the stun skating all that and the speed. And then I got into speed, the speed stuff. Mm. So I was like, cycling is lame. I'd rather skate. Mm. Right. But so I knew there were different types of bikes. I just never bothered to explore them, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And the <clears throat> Java bike. Before we started rolling, I was just giving, uh, normally I always brief my guests what's yes. going to happen. And I was like, uh, wow, besides the ATOS, let's talk about Java bike. Because, yes. Um, I love my Java <laughs> bike, to be really honest, right? So when I was, when I said I want to buy a road bike, so this is the part that shocked me. Mm. Okay. Because I'm, I'm not like, I'm pretty careful with money, mm. right? So I, I mean, I guess I grew up with not a lot of money. So I always feel like I, I, I mean, I've brought up to be very thrifty. So I was like, okay, I'm going to buy my first bike. And I asked my friends, I was like, so what would you recommend? They said, what is your budget? I'm like, no, just recommend a few. Like, why do you need to know my budget? They're like, girl, there is a wide range depending on what you want. I had no idea how much these things cost. Mm. I was like, I don't know, a thousand dollars. And then they started laughing. They're like, a thousand dollars? You want to buy a road bike for, I was like, hey, that's a lot of money. Cause like my skates, right? My my skates are already on the higher end, mm. right? So like five, $600 for skates are considered pretty high end. I was like, look, this is a new sport. I was like putting a thousand dollars. I thought it was like a lot of money. And then they laughed at me and they're like, let me bring you to Decathlon. Mm. So they brought me to Decathlon and like Decathlon entry level road bike is like a thousand, I think it was like a thousand eight. Yeah. And then the, the one level up was like 2002 or 2003. And they're like that, they're like, hello, this is decathlon. So, you know, as a sports person, you, you, we know like that's the affordable stuff, yeah. right? I was shook, man. I was like, whoa, <laughs> no wonder this bike rides so much better than all the bikes I've ever ridden. All the like, the, you know, those bikes that you can rent on the beach and yeah, stuff yeah, like, and, like yeah. nothing like that, right? Yeah. They're like, you need to put aside more money for this. I was like, huh? I said, okay, 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 okay. I'll put aside $2,000, <laughs> right? They're like, why don't you just get a decathlon bike? I'm like, can you get me something that is, like below $2,000 that's better or more interesting than the decathlon bike. Mm. And then that's how like, I think one of my friends introduced me to a Java. He's like, why don't you try this Java bike if you're not brand conscious, which I'm not, right? I was like, yeah, sure. Right now I was like, how, so how come this bike, what's wrong with it? How come it's like, he was like, no, actually the group set is pretty good. <clears throat> it's like a full carbon frame. And then like, um, I mean, and it was like a thousand, I think I paid like a thousand seven, mm. if I'm not wrong. I was like, I mean, it's still more than any other thing. I mean, wakeboard, snowboard, not included, right? I was like, that's still a lot of money, right? And to me, 
But then when I started riding it, then I realized like, whoa, some people are really snobby about bikes. <laughs> you know, I realized boys not are- Not some, not some. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I said some, he said not some. So like, you know, in the, in, in girl world, right? Because I mean, even if you look at my bag, I don't carry like designer bags, right? So, but I realized a lot of girls are really snobby about bags, mm. right? And then like, they will like size you up, like, you know what bag you're carrying? I'm like, oh, this is like a artisanal Italian brand. They're like, but what brand is it? I'm like, you don't know the brand. Right? So I, I'm that sort of person, right? And I feel the same about bikes. So. Then people like, a few people who saw the bike, right? They were like, oh, is it a Bianchi? Because my friend helped me to like, like make it look nicer or that. He's like, no, why don't you hide the Java? I'm like, why want to hide the Java? It looks more sleek. I'm like, okay, fine. So you hide the Java. A few people asked me, is this a Bianchi? I had no idea what a Bianchi was. Because <laughs> it's mint, right? And then I was like, um, no. And then there was this guy, I remember I wrote, bless his heart. I went for like this ride with a bunch of friends and a friend's friend was there and we all lined up our bike to have breakfast. And he was tearing at my bike. He was like, how much is your bike? I was like, a thousand seven. He was like, sorry, what? The wheels? I'm like, no, the bike. <laughs> I was like, the bike. He's like, like the whole bike. I'm like, the whole bike is a thousand seven and you should have seen his face, right? So later I asked my friend, I was like, he wasn't snobby though. He was really nice about it. I was like, how come he had that shocked face? He's like, because that guy's bike with his whole setup, it's probably cost 20 over the K. I'm like, what? An extra zero. Yeah, I was like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea. I yeah. had no idea. So that was like my first bike and I'm still very proud of my Java. I mean, I'm trying to sell my, by the way, anyone want to buy my Java? Cause <laughs> only because I have no space in my house and I don't need two bikes, right? How much it's, is it going for? Or a PNC or should they check out? Where, where can they get? Can, I, I don't know. I mean, if you, I haven't thought about it. You, If you offer me a thousand bucks now, a hundred bucks, <laughs> it's yours. Okay. Right. Anything less than that, you better Nigo. Anybody <laughs> wants can go through me and I'll, I'll get- Thank uh, you. Thank I'll, you. I'll I, I, no, I, I'm for real, uh, guys. For Got real, commission or not? Huh? Okay, I'll like, give you some comment. We're talking off cam this one, <laughs> off cam, off cam. <laughs> yeah, okay. but that, that's my first bike and I'm, I'm very proud of it. And honestly, I feel like it was a pretty good bike. It's amazing yeah. uh, because I, I've interviewed a, a fair number of people on my yeah. show and uh, they, they come in with expensive bikes, okay? Uh, 20,000 yeah. and like, whoa, first bike, 20,000, right? And um, in, in Singapore, just now you're talking about handbags and stuff. Yeah. Do you think it's more of like a Singaporean thing where people tend to be very materialistic? They look at brands. So, you know, when you were looking for your first bike, you said you were not very brand conscious. Yeah, uh, not at all. Not at okay, all. Okay, you know why? Because, sorry, this may like, I'm very blunt and this may like upset some people, but I always feel right the legs are the most important, mm. right? It's your body and your fitness level. So I feel like, I actually felt that if I were to buy, okay, firstly, I also didn't want to spend 20,000, but if I were to buy a $20,000 bike, I better have the cycling fitness to do the bike justice. Mm. Right? And I, I honestly feel that about all like, all my sports equipment, like even my first pair of skates, I bought a very entry level pair. And even now people will, a lot of friends, cause they know I'm into skating and stuff, right? They'll text me and say like, I want to buy skates, what should I buy? I'm like, how serious are you? If you're not that serious, just go to Decathlon and buy entry level. You can level up later, you know? So mm. I, only, I only leveled up to like the current pair that I'm using after many years of skating, mm. right? So I feel the same about bikes. Like, I feel like, I felt like if I were to be serious about it firstly, and if I were to get to a certain level, then, and the equipment is not serving me, then I will level up. Mm. But at this point, like at that point, if I were to buy like a Bianchi, mm. I would not be level, I would not be doing the equipment justice. Right. In terms of Singaporeans, I guess, I don't know about cycling as much, but I guess in like, in terms of bags, people are very brand conscious and it actually, it actually upsets me. Why? It, it, because I feel like quality is more important than brand. Mm. And I honestly feel that about everything, whether it's clothes, bags, shoes, including sports equipment, right? It's really like the components and how well the thing serves you rather than the brand. I feel like if you're just buying for the brand, then you're just doing it blind. Yeah. That, that's just my, my personal thought about brands in general, not just cycling, not just bikes. Right. So coming back to the Java, right? Um, uh, so your friend got you into to buying that yes. bike and uh, you, and you said, you know what, this is my budget, just get me whatever I can get or were you very particular to uh, what you're getting? I said, can look quite nice, la. must be mm. like a color that I like. Okay. Right? So I kind of like wanted it to have a certain look. I mean, my friend was like, so what kind of bike do you want? And I said, well, I wanted it to look a certain way and I said, but generally like as long as it's a good bike and I trust, I trust my friend to like tell me like in terms of the parts and stuff, like as long as it's a good bike with the good components that's good enough for my level, then then yeah, I was happy to buy it. Mm. And I watched <clears> one of your videos about clipless pedals. Yes. I, I thought that was quite interesting, like coming from a newbie perspective, right? Wow, that was, <laughs> it took me ages to get into clipless pedals. Yeah. Really By the way, right, mm. the first time I did it, I was like, why the toot toot toot, is it called clipless pedals when you freaking clip into the damn things? <laughs> right, and then I was like, okay, I did some research on that, but, um, uh, it took me ages because I was scared to fall. Mm. And like I said, I'm actually, in, I mean, I'm a, I, I identify more as like a runner or a skater rather than a cyclist. Especially then I was like, okay, don't need, I'll just be on sneakers. Mm. And then 
um, yeah, it took me a good few months, you know, before I was like, okay, I'm going to try this clipless pedal thing. Mm. And then so like my friend um, was like, can you help me to like, show me how it's done, right? And then I watch a few videos and they're like, oh, you should clip and clear out like many times until you get really comfortable with it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then so a friend was with me. So I said, like, can you just film me while I'm doing it? Mm. Right? And it was then random. I was at my mom's house. Mm. I actually wore some of my mom's clothes, which is why <laughs> uh, the, the outfit in that video is terrible. <laughs> From a fashion perspective, I cannot take it. <laughs> right? But I was like, I'm just going to film it anyway and then just upload it. Like it wasn't, you know, it was just shot on a, ca- on a phone, mm. not even on a camera. And I just thought, as a newbie to a sport, right? It can be intimidating. Mm. So it's something that would help someone else mm. feel less intimidated and feel less dumb, mm. right? And and hopefully not fall mm. because they didn't manage to clip out in time. Mm. Then I'm going to upload that live. If it's useful to someone, then, then yeah. good. La. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, is there anything wrong with the camera? It's, it's cut, cut okay, we got to swap, sure. swap cuts. Uh, that happens to me almost all the time because <laughs> I'm very bad clearing out my cuts. Okay, okay well, uh, maybe we shouldn't yes. stare at her. I think it's giving her a lot of stress. Those uh, stress. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so clipless pedals and then, uh, so you 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 familiarize yourself with the clipless pedals and... Uh, I basically decided I'm going to clip in and clip out to death mm. till I was uh, confident enough to know that I could clip out mm. on the road. Mm. Right, and then I also, uh, then, I then I also asked a friend like if I can take their old cleats right because then it'll be like looser right. and I set my settings to be very loose in yeah. case I cannot clip out like just paranoid I'm gonna like <laughs> not be able to clip out yeah, yeah yeah. but actually like nothing to worry about I would say to all newbies I didn't fall mm. right and it, it really is not as intimidating as, as I thought it would have been like. I was mm. just like I guess every time I approach a light when I first start I was like clip out Jade clip out <laughs> right I just clip the damn <laughs> foot out of the pedal yeah. but other than that like yeah I mean it, it really was I mean, it seemed very intimidating, but it really wasn't. Okay. Yeah. So you speak uh, rather highly about the Java. Uh, I love the Java. <laughs> so what happened here? Why why do we have a specialized okay, today? Okay, so like uh, specialized happened because during, I mean, I started, so I, I told you I started, like I even got onto a road bike in the first place because of COVID, mm. right? And then, um, so I started cycling then. I guess specialized at that time, they'd seen me do a few live streams because I also started doing like live streaming during COVID, right? I have, I did like a few positive psychology workshops. I did a few like live stream for clients, you know, like Chinese New Year live streams and I did a North Face sale. So, so random, mm. right? So I think they got wind of that and then they contacted me and they asked me like if I would do some live streams for them because they also wanted to engage their customers during COVID. And I think a lot of people were trying to do that then and mm. it's a different skill set, right? I mean, it's same, same. If you're a presenter, generally it helps, but it's kind of like a different skill set as well. So, I started working with them and then I got to know their bikes. I got to know them. And then I guess then that's how it happened. I drank the Kool-Aid. I'm like, there's this cool <laughs> new lightweight bike that's coming out. Right. And then we kind of worked together on it. I was like, yeah. And then they, they also had this um, whole unboxing thing that they were unveiling. I don't know why this video never came out. I'm going to ask them. Mm. I should, I know it's like two years too late, but like <laughs> I should release this video also, right? Where like when I got the bike, it was, oh my gosh, it was such an exciting day that I was like, oh my, now I understand why people say new bike day, right? Because it came in this huge box and yeah. then I like literally opened the box. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty amazing experience. So that, yeah. that's how I got into, yeah, the, the specialized thing. Okay. And and at that point, honestly, the ethos was just coming out. Yeah. So I was like pretty stoked to be one of the first few people right. in Singapore to, to own it. And and how, how long have you owned this bike already? Has it been two years or yeah, just over a year? I think it's been, I think it's been almost two years. Almost two years. Yeah. So this is a, it's, it's not the S-Works, it's a specialized. It's a specialized uh, com. Specialized yeah. com, and we've got a uh, SRAM uh, Force on the uh, yes. electronic group set. I love did the you, electronic <laughs> group set. <laughs> did, you, did you know that bikes have electronic group I sets? knew that, I knew that. Because when, when I started cycling, right, then I think I was cycling next to a friend and then he went, then I was like, whoa, yeah. what's that? <laughs> he was like, oh, you know, some bikes have electronic group set. No, I was like, so extra <laughs> la, this one. But then I tried it and I was like, whoa. Okay, so that's the only thing I have to say, like this electronic group set, right? I know some people still think it's very extra. I love it. Mm. I freaking love it. Like just because the gears don't get stuck and then it's so much easier to change. Like mm. when there's a slope, there's a slope, then you can like yeah. change like a lot faster. Like I really, really appreciate it. It's the, very seamless. It's really seamless. So recently yeah. I was in Bali and I had to use, I mean, I, I rented a bike there and I used a mechanical group set. I was like, whoa, mm. this is way slower than I remember. <laughs> and then there was my like, I was with a guide and then he was like, oh, there's like a 20 degree gradient. I'm like, sorry, what? <laughs> right. And then so it was really like random. Like we turned left, he's like, 
drop gear, drop gear. I was like, what? Yeah, like, like trying to drop gear and I couldn't drop fast enough, right? I was like, dude, I'm so used to this, right? I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, so the stream rate and, uh, and the rest is pretty much stock. You didn't do any upgrades, make any upgrades besides uh, the wheels. The wheels, yeah. Otherwise, I've, yeah, That's I've pretty, pretty much, much just stuck to the yeah, stock. And you're not yeah. the kind of person that upgrades things. You look at new bike parts, like, whoa, okay, I want that, you know? No, because like I said, I'm just generally, I mean, this is not just with cycling. I gen- generally, I'm not a shopper. Mm. I know this is weird because I run like a live streaming commerce <laughs> business. But I myself, like I will shop if like, if I see something. But like even for like clothes or bags, I don't actively, like I know some people, they scroll through. Mm. Or like, I didn't even know it was a Black Friday sale and there's someone told me, I was like, it was Black Friday weekend. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. But like, I'm, I'm generally just not a shopper. All right. Right. So no, I, I don't generally browse a lot. And okay. I, I'm, I'm the kind like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if, if something touch wood, if something breaks, then I'm going to fix it. But yeah. if it ain't broke, I haven't fixed anything. Are, are you a very mechanical person? Not generally, no. Okay. Even like, I guess, for sports in general, like you were saying, what have I not done? Mm. The sports that I gravitate to, gravitate towards are very like instinctive sports. Mm. Right? It's very instinctive. Like it's like balancing. It's very free moving. You know, it's not super technical. Yeah, I guess that's why things like tennis maybe not because it's a lot more tenic- uh, technical. Yeah, and I see on your videos you do a lot of uh, you did the team time trial which we'll speak about. Oh later my gosh! As well. <laughs> yeah, and I was asking you why didn't you go for a more aero frame? But then again, uh, this was part of uh, you know you were working with specialized for this one, right? I mean, I could have, but. I guess I just didn't see the need to, mm. right? Because, um, I mean, at, at the at the competition, at the TTT, I was like, whoa, everyone's got these fancy, shamancy <laughs> TT bikes, right? And here's me, my ATOS, like, <laughs> not even a, like a, you know, like a lightweight bike, not even like a, like an aero bike, yeah. right? But I was like, I guess a part of me, like, still believes that you can get the most aero bike in the world, mm. but if you are not, doing it justice then there's no point mm. right maybe there was one the two is like I also didn't really want to spend the money to get yeah. like a, an, a TT bike yeah. you know not knowing that this I mean it, it might be my first and, and ever last race mm. who knows right so yeah. I was like no need la. Mm. Right? I'm just kind of chill like that I guess yeah and I think this bike would retail around 10-ish K I might mm-hmm. be wrong and, and compared to your Java which was a, a big of a difference would yeah. you say so and uh, what's the, the riding experience like coming from a Java moving on to this I gotta say I really really love this bike like I, I mean it's so responsive not just the fact that it's the electronic shift bike but everything like it just feels I mean, I also got bike fit and all that, right, for this bike. So it was, I guess that also helped, but it just feels great on the road. I don't know how to explain it. It's responsive in every way. Mm. Uh, climbing mm. <laughs> is the best, I have to say, right? Every time I go for a bike fit, right, people are like, oh my gosh, Jade, you are such a climber. <laughs> you know, they're like lanky, lightweight frame. I'm like, I hate climbing, guys. I actually hate it, you know, <laughs> right? And then they're like, lightweight frame, lightweight bike. I'm like, yeah, no, no. But yeah. it does help to have a bike like that on climbs. Is like super, Yeah, I gotta say. Um, yeah, and I, I love the fact that it's lightweight. These are not Shimano's pedals, right? Look, Look. Yeah. Look. Do you start it on, on, on uh, look yes. or was it? Why, I, why I, look, by the way? Was just it because, because of friends. Friends, bike? friends no. bike. Okay. Yeah, it's friends bikes and then look and then I was like, so I was like, so what's the difference? And then I realized boys are really vain about their bike. Yeah. So my friends are like, look, it's a lot more sleek than Shimano. <laughs> Sorry to Shimano fans. It's but also like, a French brand. Uh, yeah. So snobby, you guys. <laughs> right. But then here's me with my look pedals, right? The, the, so really, it was just, a lot of it was just coincidence mm. and like, serendipity that I ended up with look pedals I yeah. guess yeah and the wheels are these are the local brand uh, yes SM Polaris yes how, how I'm assuming they approached you as well and uh, yes so okay. this one I gotta say like um, Ascent they approached me very early on when I was still with my Java mm. I love how they were not snobby as well I put the Ascent wheels on my Java which I'm like yeah now the, the bike the value of the bike suddenly has gone up by like double right <laughs> <laughs> the wheels cost more than the bike yeah. <laughs> yes yes um, yeah I, I mean I love these so I was on the 69 mm. mm's before I tried those for a while because I was like you know what maybe like a deeper wheel will make me go faster mm. hold the speed better and all that but I realised actually I still much prefer the, the 42 because mm. I, I, I like I do like the lightweight bikes and the wheel the lighter wheels for the pickup mm. right so I know you sacrifice a bit on like the you know the speed when you're actually trying to hold the speed but I, I feel like these are a good 
balance. So you've tried the 69s? And I have tried this. I was actually riding the 69s for the longest time. Okay. And then um, for the for the TTT, I actually rode with the 69s, mm. right? Um, which was great for the TTT, but I think generally I prefer these. Wow, Jade is very knowledgeable about her bike, guys. No, I am not. <laughs> I just know how it feels. I was like thinking, how should I craft this interview? <laughs> but no, wow, no, okay. No, no, no. no. I, I, just, I just know how it feels, right? Because like, it's just very, which is why I feel like I'm, I mean, like I have people, it's kind of nice. Actually, honestly, the cycling community is really nice. Mm. I have people coming to me on road and saying like, I really like your videos mm. or your content, you know? And then like, um, I think it's just from a very beginner angle, I still consider myself a very, very beginner rider. Mm. Although I tell my friends, they're like, bullshit, like, you've done like a TTT. I'm like, no, no, no. I still consider myself very entry level, very beginner, but I just know how it feels. Yeah. Right. So I know that with the 69, like the pickup was just a, a lot slower. Mm. I would, I would, then I, I learned to like counter, I would deliberately drop gear mm. when I'm like approaching a red light. Right. Them leche la, you know, so <laughs> I, I prefer the, so I, I don't, it just feels more natural. The whole bike feels like this setup really suits me, like, I have to say. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you were mentioning about ID mesh. So this morning before I, I come for the interview, normally I come very unprepared, but uh, because <laughs> Jits, yeah, you know, so <laughs> I got to be very prepared. So I watched all, I was binge watching all of her videos. So uh, what, what, okay. So most of the topics here are actually from her videos. So okay. uh, we briefly mentioned about bike fitting. Yes. So you did, I saw you went to One Bike Asia, you did the ID match. I, I also did that. Yeah. Um, how, how did you find, did you know that we go for bike fits and- uh, I know, because actually before I went for, uh, to One Bike Asia for the mm. ID, match I actually went to Fahrenheit performance okay right so that was I actually did fit on the Java right so Fahrenheit um, was owned by a friend and then so he actually contacted me and we haven't been in contact for years mm. right Martin hi Martin <laughs> <laughs> right so he actually contacted me asked me if I wanted to get by fit so I'm to be honest I'm a person who's very grateful. So I'm very, very grateful to someone like Martin, uh, also to, uh, to Ting Xiang from Ascent, right? Like, I mean, I was really beginner on my Java bike, mm. right? These people also did not look down on my Java bike and he fitted me on that. Um, that was my first time going for a bike fit and I was so uh, amazed. I didn't know like the whole process, you know, I wish I had taken a video then mm. uh, on it, but then like, I, I didn't know that the process was like that, Yeah. right? And then it was, I mean, that was um, like, all the small tweaks that you would do because obviously it wasn't the, the ID ID match, right? Mm. So that was my first time doing it. And then the second time was when I got this bike and then one by Asia, uh, Asia asked me if I wanted to do the ID match. So I was also very intrigued to, because of the technology, I was quite interested to see, you mm. know, what will come up and stuff like that. I was like, whoa, this is even cooler. Yeah. Like I didn't know it's so like technical. Was there a very big difference between the ID match and the Fahrenheit one? How did they do it on the Fahrenheit, in Fahrenheit? Like, I mean, I literally, it's similar in that you ride the bike and then mm. they like, they measure you and they also, they put like, um, oh, so sensors on yeah, on they put the arm. sensors on me. Yeah. Right. And then they measure me, but then I also did check like, you know, I know that the, the verdict is still out and people still feel like even within my friends group, right. People have very different feels about both. Mm. Right? Like some people feel like there's nothing like a human touch mm. to still look at a body on a bike, right? For a professional bike fitter to look at you and like, yeah, you know, they can kind of assess you based on your frame and like the way you write and from their own experience. And then there are some people who really believe in like the big data, like there's this technical side that you can't go wrong with the big data, right? Mm. To be honest, I'm still kind of half and half on this. I, yeah. I can see the points of both, mm. right? I can see the points of both. And I have friends who are very fiercely, have very fierce opinions on both. Mm. Right? So it's the same thing, but different. I guess for the ID match, I mean, for the, when I went to Fahrenheit, like Martin looked at me, we put the sensors and it was very detailed as well. And then the ID match was a bit, I guess, faster because it's all, um, tech, um it's all big data. Computerized. Right? Computerized, yeah. yeah. So it was a diff same, same, but different experience, I guess. Was there a lot of differences made after the bike fit and compared to pre-bike fit and after uh, post-bike fit? For both, the yeah. seat posts went way up. Okay, so like you were too way, low. Way, way up. Yeah, I was too low. I think people, and this is the problem because I, I, I think, okay, for the ID match, what was interesting was that I guess the manual bike fit, it's not like a necessity, but it's something that's just interesting for me because I do like information, right? Mm -hmm. Like to s compare against like the rest of the world, the rest of the girls that might be my height, mm -hmm. my age, my weight, my whatever, right? So like, I mean, I learned certain things about myself that I kind of knew, but like it confirmed it. Mm. Like I have extra wide shoulders for someone like of my frame. I have extra long legs, mm. extra short body. Mm. Which I guess people don't realize like, for example, when I wrote in Bali, I send the guy my fits, but I think they, in Bali, they're a bit more chill. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. And then people always give me a too low, too small and bike and too low seat post. Yeah. Right. So it's because I'm also disproportionate. So you couldn't have gone for a bigger size. 
for the bike. Look at the look at how how high the seat post is. Can't even fit in my, my frame. My so camera frame. a few. So I don't. To be honest, right, and this one maybe like viewers can. I'm actually very curious to hear your comments and and viewers thoughts as well. Right, I'm I'm actually not sure. Right. <laughs> to, my, to be sure, I'm not sure because this was what I was advised based on like my height and stuff. Okay. But I think people don't realize how disproportionate my body actually is. Yeah. Like when I when I, it's it's to the point where I meet people when I'm sitting down. And people think I'm very petite. Right? How people, tall are you? I'm 171. Okay. Right. But then when I sit down, like, because my body's so short, right? People think I'm very petite. <laughs> right. And then I said, like, whoa, someone actually said, like, I, I thought it was quite funny. You're very uh, lengthy. I'm very lanky, like I have very long limbs. Yeah. But very short body. Right. So someone when I stood up said, This is like Super Mario. You know, like you take the mushroom, dun, 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 then you like grow. <laughs> because like suddenly I said, like, whoa, how come this girl's so tall? Right. <laughs> right. So I think that's the problem for like the like when people decide what bike to give me. Mm. I mean, I have the same problem even for like snowboarding. Right? So snowboarding, they go by height, by weight. Mm. So I was riding a too huge board, but mostly by height, not so much by weight. Why do you know snowboarding? Snow, snow, uh, you have different sizes of snowboards. Oh, yeah, different lengths for sure. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. So like for my height, 171, they, they recommend like a very big frame. Ah. Right? But then I'm actually pretty light for my height. Mm. Right? And then so I tried, my friend was only 16. She said, why don't you try my board? And then I was like, oh, actually this works so much better. So sometimes it's trial and error. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me. This is a size 52. Yeah. Uh, I mean, based on the length, I, I don't know whether a 54 will work, but then again, you're only 171. We got a professional bike fitter there. Maybe he will. He's secretly judging. Like, I think he's, I, he's probably secretly judging these fools. <laughs> but how many <laughs> y'all don't know this? I don't know, man. Wait, so Specialized uh, recommended this frame. Mm. This size. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they recommended this size. So I mean, for me, I trusted them and it feels good. It does feel good, yeah. but I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if maybe it's maybe the, the viewers can comment later because really, you'll take really B-rolls of you right Yeah, yeah. And Please comment. Please some, comment. Some of your videos when I watch, right, your your hands are not exactly on the hoods. You're slightly a little bit back. That's why you can see your bar tape is like so worn out on that side. Okay, it's also because I'm lazy. Okay. <laughs> do you do you feel too stretched out if you're holding on the hoods? Okay, this is also for a few reasons, like. One is my body is really short. Mm. Right? It's like really, really short. So I understand that the, the, and maybe like, yeah, you guys can sound out, right? I understand the pain of like what size bike would fit me with the extra long legs, but an extra, extra short body. Mm. And then the, the other thing is I'm not very flexible, right? So I think like the, like in terms of like doing this for too long. Yeah. Right? So I'm very lazy. La. So if I'm not like racing or like, like trying to not get dropped down West Coast Highway <laughs> and on the drops, right? Then, I mean, not even be your hoods. I'm just like chilling. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like chilling. And then like a lot of times I do leisure, I'm just like chilling. Right. So yeah, that's just me being lazy. Mm. Right. But when I'm on the drops, it feels fine. Yeah. Right. So, and when I'm on the hoods, it feels fine as well. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, the bike feels good like this, but everyone has an opinion. Like I've had a few people tell me that the bike is too small for me. It, it looks okay. On, 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 on uh, first glance, it looks small. Yeah. Right. Uh, but again, uh, let, let, let people yeah, have Please, their, please, guys. I'm really, really <laughs> curious. Yeah. I, I mean, cycling yeah. community, I, I, this is what I appreciate, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I posted a picture of myself in Bali. I can send you a picture, right? Yeah. And like, so, like I posted on, on stories, so many people, my friends, like, they, they were like, Jade, the bike's too small for you. <laughs> the bike's too small. Why is your bike too small? Like a few, quite more than one cycling friend. I think like, like almost 10 people. Did any of the bike fitters say anything? Uh, no, I mean, like I said, for both the bike fits, they just increased the seat post by a lot. Okay. Right, and then this one was like a lot, a lot. I was like, whoa, that's really high. But then after they did it, I was like, that feels so good. Yeah. Because my legs like had space to move and stuff like that. Like, so I, no, they just, I just know that for both bike, bike fits, right? The biggest change was the huge increase mm. in the saddle height. And do you feel much more comfortable after that? Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure, for sure. So in Bali also, like the bike that I rode, right? After like riding for maybe 1km, I, I stopped. I was like, can we make the seat post a lot higher? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you've done quite a lot of RTIs. Uh, <laughs> in your videos, you did a 121, you did a 160. Yes. Uh, how was the experience like? So I'm a very goal-oriented person, right? And like, when I first started riding, I was like, I was like, how is it possible to ride for 100km and not stop? I mean, for someone who's never ridden, right? I was like, okay, guys, I want to do this. Mm. Let's just do a like RTI, right? And then the first time, dude, I almost died, man. I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> was it the 121 or 160? Both. Both. <laughs> I mean, for different reasons. Like, okay, the 121 was like more painful. I guess it was my first time ever, mm. right? And I, I was like, I almost died. The 160 was painful because because twice, mm. because lampos one is yeah. horrible. The Guys roads. don't do it. Yeah. yeah, the roads. And then it's like the mental torture of like going all the way in, knowing you've come all the way out. <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. then I remember like when we were we were at Pasiris, right? And we were supposed to hit like 
that was where we're gonna hit the TMCR and all that. Right? I was like, guys, I'm done. I'm gonna go home. Yeah. Because I'm past ways to like where my my parents stay, which is why I leave my bike. It's like not that far. I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna like, yeah, head on back. They're like, no, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna eat something, mm. right? So then, but I tell you, food is everything. So I I'm a very non gel kind of person. Oh, same here. Non gel. Have you tried it though? Non isotonic. I used to run marathons, so I I did gels when I run marathons. I forced isotonic down for marathons, but I really don't like the taste. Yeah. I ate a bowl of pan mian, right? Yeah. That was it, man. They're like, what's in the ban mian? Because after that, I was like, yeah, let's TMCR this. I'm like, I'm good, guys. And last 40k, no sweat. Really, really need to eat, need to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really need to eat. And like, hawker food is the best. To I, me. I, I, I used to, uh, I think I'm still like you. I, I try to be as clean, you know, not no, take those don't, gels. A- but when I, you know, my friend Ryan, he's behind the camera. Is he judging? Are you judging? Are so you she brought me on a, a super long JB ride, right? I'm like, I went in like, okay, JB, how hard can it be? Yeah. You also did a JB yeah. ride. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I went oh, like, like, these guys just dropped me and like, oh, I, I think you should start eating some gels. I know a bit too late, but, but yeah. it does help. It gives that kick. I mean, from like the, when I used to run marathons, it does because I also like marathons, they'll give you a banana at like the 35km mm. mark. So I'm like, how the hell does one eat a banana when you're like so tired? <laughs> then, I don't even like to eat that. Yeah. Then you're like forcing it down. So it was like, when I started long distance running that I started doing the gel thing. I guess cycling, I've just never done anything where... I felt that I couldn't just stop and eat wonton me. <laughs> no, I, I'm not even kidding. Like, so my friends know, right? They're like, Jay needs to eat every 40 km. Like, yeah. At 30, 40 km, right? Is when I get very, like, hangry. I'm like, guys, we need to stop and eat something. And my something is like, but my, my, my Breakfast of choice, ban me and wonton me, pass for me, right? <laughs> so then, to me, it's like, JB, Singapore, there's nowhere where I cannot stop to eat this. Yeah. If I were like in Europe, maybe, yeah. I would eat gels because yeah. the food is like, ask me to eat bread, no thanks. <laughs> you know, but like, <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm You need still, all the carbs. Yeah, I mean, I really, I can really feel like the hunger, you know. Mm. I, I will eat before I write, but I can feel the hunger setting in 30km. I feel like whatever I ate is gone. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Bangkok Skyline. Yes. I, I went there as well. I, I rented the... Do you know you can rent bikes there? Eh? Yes. So I, I wanted... I, I rented a bike there. Okay, which one do you rent? If you uh, remember. Oh, I can't remember. Can I, can I get back to you on yeah, this? Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. I, I think I wanted, okay, so I wanted to rent like a nice bike, mm. right? Like a, one of the pro bikes, a Pinarello. I wanted to rent I a Pinarello. They didn't have my size. They had like a 46 Yeah. and like a 50. I think they had one which was a 51.5. No, but when I went, they were all out. Okay. I don't even think they had 50 something. It was all 40 something. So mm. there's no way I could ride that, right? Yeah. So then I was, I was pretty bummed. Yeah. So I rented like a normal one. Well, I was pretty bummed because I thought I could ride like a nice fancy schmancy bike <laughs> on the like, um, yeah. So I didn't get to, but I, I might go back and do it. La. It I is w- nice. Yeah. But it's super windy though. Wait, I mean, it wasn't that windy though. Uh, yeah, it wasn't that windy. I, 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 okay, how I can explain that, uh, what's it called? Like happy something in the, the, the bike lane, right? It's like Healthy TMC, and happy bike healthy, lane. Yes. I love the name. So cute. <laughs> it's just next to the airport. I, yes. And people ask me, how is it like? I was just like, oh, it's just like TMCR times 10. Yeah, so to be honest, like it's pretty, but like- so It's just the, flat and just going around. It's not the most exciting thing. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Sorry, but it's really not. Where's the most exciting place you've ridden? Um, so far, Bali. Bali? Bali has been pretty damn exciting, I gotta say. I've done, I did the ride to Jetty Lu, J- Jetty Louis, J- oh my gosh, Jetty Louis, mm. Jetty Louis. I may, be, I'm butchering this. I'm so sorry to any Indoor friends. <laughs> uh, I think Jetty Louis, so I did that. And then this time around, I did another one. Mm. Um, yeah, Bali's pretty exciting because like the rolling hills are really rolling, yeah. right? The gradients are really gradients, <laughs> right? I was like, whoa. So that was my first like 20%. I was like, whoa, this is like, <laughs> and then like, so then after that, right? I actually have a video that this guy, right? He actually clapped for me because mm. after he's like, because cause I've been riding this for so long, right? I forgot that I could switch to the small chain ring. Uh. I didn't even switch to the small chain <laughs> ring. And then on top of that, right? It was like only an eight speed. So mm. I was like, he was like, well done, you did this on. I was like, yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> on an eight speed. I was dying. I was like, I really like, the only thing that kept me going was, you're not going to be able to clip up. You're going to fall if you don't just get your ass up this, this hill, yeah. right? So I, I kept going only because yeah. I didn't want to fall. How do you film your rides? Are you on an Insta360? Um, okay, so I have really good friends. Number one, thank you to all my friends. Y'all know who you are, who help me film. A lot of my rides are filmed by friends. Mm. Uh, in Bali, like the guy that I go with, the this guy, like it was recommended by a friend. So he's like some ex Bali champion. Hmm. He's them Zyla basically. So he filmed no sweat. Hmm. So he'll help me film. Hmm. Otherwise I use a 360. Yeah. 360. Is yeah. that easy to film on? 
Yeah, it's, okay. it's crap to edit on. Crap to edit on. It's not fun. Because it's like 360, you gotta yeah, pan the angle. But then thanks to Monster TV for helping me to edit. Yeah, I don't Monster edit TV. That. Monster TV can edit my videos. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> jack, Jack, Jack. You may have new new friend. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we move on to the IG q and Yes. Uh, what's your apparel of choice? Do you know that we have a lot of uh, biking uh, apparels and they are very expensive. Oh yeah, so this is, this was news to me. This is another piece of news to me, right? Because again, I said, I don't spend a lot of money generally, even on clothes and stuff, right? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, how much can like a jersey cost, right? I was like, sorry, what? The, 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 full, the full jersey and bib can cost like a thousand dollars for cloth? I almost died. I really, I said, I almost died. I was like, whoa, right, whoa. But uh, okay, like, Vain, like, I do have like quite a few nice jerseys. Nice ones. Yeah, uh, which, I, which is the, the, the one that you go to? Which is the go-to one? I have quite a few that I really like. And I've quite a few people who have sent me really nice jerseys and bibs. So thank you mm. to everyone at Wonder CSPD Monta. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, purpose, like, <laughs> So these are the few that like, I honestly, I really, really like, and I've, I've bought a few as well, right? Mm. I mean, cannot help but to buy some as well. Okay. And, and shoes, what shoes do you? Okay. I'm in the market for a new pair of shoes. Cycling community, please help me to. The new ones are, which are very popular. It's called Nimble. Have you okay. heard of them? No, I've not actually. It's, it's very popular in Singapore anyway. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, but I it's really... very expensive. I cannot afford. How, how much are they? I think these are a thousand. I oh think. my gosh, this guy. <laughs> I'm like... Thousand, right? Nimbles? Eight hundred. Oh, sorry, sorry, eight hundred. Wow. Yeah, okay. but those are the popular ones now. Wow, right? wow. So I am in the market for new shoes. I've got on a pair of Specialized. I actually saw at a bike fit, right? The the last bike fit. I show you. Oh my- yes, I want to ask about that. Sorry, you go ahead. Yeah. So then, I was getting them bad like bunions on the side mm. of my shoe. Then, Nicholas was like, you know, I have a simple solution for this, but it's very unorthodox and kind of. Like, it sounds kind of crappy, but it works. I'm like, what? He's like, cut a hole in your shoe. I'm like, sorry, what? <laughs> cut a hole in my expensive shoes? He's like, I'm telling you, it's going to solve your problems. I was yeah. like, okay, bite the bullet. I cut a hole in the shoe. Solve the problem. Really, really, really. And the video's on YouTube. We will put a snippet here. If you don't mind me ripping that off. Of course not. Please watch my YouTube channel <laughs> yeah, as well. Thank you so much, JCL Official. I'm going to just give myself a plug. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And um, so Please put a super as well. Thanks. Sure. Uh, and... and it was a very uh, unconventional way of doing it. So how did you realize that you had bunions and they, they wanted to cut Okay, so like I told you, every like 30, 40 km, right? My stomach would tell me, Jay, you need to stop and eat. Mm. But the sides of my foot would also, because they'd be burning. Mm. So every time we stop to eat, right? I would need to unbuckle my shoes. And when I did the RTI, that was the one that really hurt. Like when I had the bunion, right? Mm. I actually, unbuckling it wasn't good enough because you know, you had cycled like already 120 km by then. I needed to remove it completely to let it like, stop hurting mm. right and I was like then my friends were like your shoes shouldn't hurt that much I said you mean your, your feet don't hurt after like 100 over K they're like not to this extent right so I think I mentioned it to to the guys at One by Asia and then it was like cut a hole but at that point I was so desperate to solve the problem because every 30 40 K it really really hurt and he cut a hole and the rest is history no more so pain. you're still wearing the pair of shoes Yes. With a hole in it. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I'm that kind of person, guys. I just, I'm just a very, honestly, I'm a very simple person. No, I guess it works. It works. I'm a very simple person. If it, if it isn't broke, if it ain't broke, I don't fix it, right? Yeah. So the only reason I'm in the market for a new pair of shoes is for very vain reasons. I want white shoes. So the specialized shoes? I really just shoes, want white shoes. <laughs> the specialized shoes are too narrow. I don't know. Maybe it's just this one. I've been looking at another pair. Um, yeah from Specialized, but I think they sold out now mm. uh, with like some very dreamy design on them. Okay. Right. right. So I really wanted those, but actually, honestly, honestly, for mere design purposes. By the time this video is out, I don't know whether you've got a new pair of shoes, but I'll try my best not. to edit Probably this and not. put it out as Probably soon as not. possible. Probably <laughs> not, because I take ages to get these things. <laughs> In fact, I, I tell you how bad I am at buying things, even buying like earphones, right? Mm. My cousin-in-law had to text me. So he actually texted me, he said, because mine were like dying already. Yeah. And they wouldn't hold charge for more than two hours, which is very sad when I'm riding home alone on Nickel Highway. Mm. And then like suddenly I'm like, yeah, feeling it. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> right? So I was like, okay, I need new earphones, right? And I, I, I didn't get around to buying it. He sent me some, like, some link. I never got around to clicking it. Yeah. And then finally one day, this is the people who love me. Uh, thank you, Nick. Just <laughs> saying. He actually called, like text me. He's like, I'm a challenger now. They have it here. The pink and white one you want. I just help you buy. I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> I'm that bad. So yes, anyone in the market for shoes, you, let me know. Just, just tell me. I, I really not great with buying things. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The, the, the earphones that you're mentioning, you wear after shocks, is it? Yeah. No. Is it good? I just got them. Okay. Previously, I was, I was using a no brand one. Ah. Uh, yeah. But, but it works. 
it works, it works. Until I until I stop holding charge, mm. right? Then um yeah, so no now I've I've just changed. Okay. Yeah. Uh wow, we, we spoke about so many things, but not really much about your bike. I know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm chatty. Back back to the bike, right? <laughs> Anything you you wish was much better on a bike, you would want to upgrade. Oh, this is just fine. No. I mean, honestly, I, I really like this bike. Mm. I guess like if I were to upgrade my everyone recently is like, Jay, you don't want to get aero bike, aero bike, aero <laughs> bike. I'm like, I guess I would love to try a TT bike. Yeah. Just to try it, because I've never tried a TT bike. Clarence has one, right? <laughs> Shout out to Clarence, by the way, who who hooked me up with uh, Jade's Oh yeah, manager. thanks. Yeah, Clarence has one. Clarence, by the way. Just saying, bro, you're still holding on to my Java. He's put my Java at podium performance. <laughs> right, so hi to Weiliang as well. Thanks for letting me put my Java there. And uh, yeah, so Clarence, yes. No, he, Clarence has sold his TT bike. He's on a track Imonda, I think. He just switched to like a, yeah, a non-TT bike. A, a non-TT bike, yeah, bike yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, Clarence, I'm still waiting for you to come to my show, by the way. Oh, oh, hello, Clarence. Yeah. <laughs> now Jade asking you to come on the show yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, for me, anything, it will be more like, I would like to try a TT bike, TT but bike. I'm actually pretty happy with this bike. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but people, please, recommend if you guys I, I always I'm always like very open to recommendations but are you prepared to pay it's you know really really expensive. I, <laughs> I guess there are sure, cheaper I'm options out sure. there sometimes I see really chill bikes right yeah. like like a friend who did his whole bike all in white mm. I thought it was the most beautiful thing ever <laughs> white tires the white wheels yeah. white everything I was like <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah I don't know I don't know if I'm willing to pay that <laughs> yeah it's, it's expensive um, yes. so actually that is the perfect segue, segue to my IGQ and a yes. which uh, this guy asked what is your next bike I don't know mm. I really don't know I mean honestly like like I said my attitude is generally if it ain't broke don't fix it mm. I, I'm not really in the market for a bike if I were it would be a TT bike please recommend I yeah. have no idea what to get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, have you brought your bike overseas before yes Bali um, right no, so I didn't bring it to Bali. Oh, Bali was on the eight speed. Yes, okay. twice. Right. <laughs> right. So I didn't bring it to Bali. I ought to, but I'm also very lazy. Yeah. So I was like, huh? And then a lot of times like these trips are like for work or like it's just on the way by the way. And I like just, you know, kind of squeeze in a cycle or hike for fun. Mm. I've ridden to JB yeah. um, with some friends. Also quite random. JB considered overseas, uh? Can la, of course, cause we're over the sea one. Right? <laughs> so you need to bring passport, huh? Need to bring passport, yeah. That, that was a bit of a, an experience, like going over the, all the bumps. Yeah. I was kind of like, it was pretty early on, right? Yeah. I was still like, like in my head, like clip, remember to clip out, Ajit? Remember to clip out, yeah? <laughs> Fall out at the customs, <laughs> damn siasway, you know? Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, but yeah, yeah the, only the JB so far. Okay. I would like to take it overseas. I think it's very more fun. Like you need a bike mm, bag, yeah, put yeah, it on yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but with skiing, you, you, you go overseas for But skiing. it's different because like for snowboarding, right? I have a, like the snowboard is not as leche, yeah. right? And then you just put it in and then you- Nothing to assemble also. There's nothing to assemble. And then I just shove all my snow gear, like hammer all that into the same board bag. Mm. And then that's it. But I feel like the bike, there's a bit more assembly and all that. And a bit more chance that it'll get damaged. Yeah. I guess I need to buy a bike bag, a bike box. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. a bit more leche, like, but more like, yeah. I would like to though. I would like to. Snowboarding or cycling? Which one is? <laughs> I know this is kind of wrong to say on a cycling channel but snowboarding snowboarding wow why snowboarding. why why what, um, what is cycling lacking that, that snowboard gives you uh, okay. ice I have to say quite similar because there there is the height element when there are hills mm. there's the speed element but there's the like my hands free element oh, okay. right so I think what snowboard gives me is like the, the freedom feeling is just a little bit more same as skating right it's just a little bit more because yeah. your hands are free you like a bit more freedom of movement mm. Yeah. And, and, and it's a bit more scary snowboarding. Have you ever considered trying mountain biking? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. So okay. I'm, I'm actually really curious about it. So actually, I just told the guy that the guy that I go with in Bali, I was like, next time I'm back in Bali, we go mountain biking. <laughs> so the reason why I haven't is number one, I have to buy another bike. Number two, mm. I have to clean the bike after every... Yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of a bitch. La. So that, that's what's stopping me. Very, very, very like logistic things. But if I'm in Bali and it's not my bike, yeah. hey, I want to try, man. I would say mountain biking is much more fun than road biking. Is it? Yes. I, 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 I have been doing mountain Do, biking yeah. some time and uh, I, I recently just got a mountain bike which I'm planning to sell anybody wants to buy because Bukit Timah is too damn far away from my house. <laughs> oh, are you east side? Are you east side? I, I am in, uh, I'm in Kalang, Upper Boon King. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm east side too. So yes, Bukit Timah is very far yeah. from my house too. Unfortunately, I do not have a car. Uh, so, you know, getting there, it's like a 15k right up there. I only can do one lap and I come back I'm like, what the hell? I cycled. Shag, right? I spent too much time yeah, just yeah, getting yeah, yeah. there and I only do one lap and I come back. So I'm like, uh, you know what? Stick to road biking. I'm going to sell the bike. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe but we can make a deal. Fun. No, I, I kind of want to try. I've never really tried it. 
So like the next time I'm in Bali, I I really told this guy I'm making an appointment to. <laughs> but the next time it will be we'll do one day road bike, one day mountain bike. If you want to try, by the way, so um, there's this bike shop that's near uh the Bukit Timah Trail. It's called Unsprung. It's a mountain bike shop. You can okay. actually rent mountain bikes there. Oh really? So before I bought my mountain bike, I wanted to. Uh, test out the trails. Yeah. I, I rented one of their bikes there. Really? And it's pretty cheap. I mean, just give it a try. If you like it, then only buy a bike. Yeah. I think the other thing that like, for me, like that I really like about cycling is the, the social aspect. Mm. So I don't have any friends who mountain bike. Mm. Like, so I guess I need mountain biking friends. Oh, yeah, you're so popular people. No you, see, you just post one Insta story. Want to go mountain biking with people everywhere will follow you. <laughs> <laughs> I need mountain biking friends, yeah. guys. Okay, next question. Um... Oh, interesting one. Why why are your bips uh, relatively short, like much shorter compared to guys? Is is it because it's it's female specific or? I think <laughs> I just have really long legs. Okay. <laughs> everything looks short on me. <laughs> honestly, honestly, everything looks short on me. Uh, I do have a couple that are a bit shorter, and I kind of mm. like them. So I have a pair of Ed Wonder, which I think I brought the, those that pair actually just nice. Right. And a pair of Mountain ones that are cut for females, so it's it is cut shorter. Mm. I do appreciate brands that make female specific cuts mm. that are shorter. So. That's also why I think it's a bit more flattering, lah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking- That's a funny question, though. Yeah, it's a funny question. <laughs> Is that from a guy or a girl? I have no idea. You know, they all have usernames, lah. Uh, okay, can't okay, tell. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of small bikes, yes. this user just says that your bike is too small. Oh my gosh! You see? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Please let me know if you think my bike is too small. I'm really very open to like comments and suggestions. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to ask this question, but you don't have to answer, okay? Yes. Uh, do you get special price because you are Jade Sia? <laughs> wow. I mean, special price from special life. Let's just say we have a good relationship, right? Okay. And, and I do work with them on several things. Okay, yeah. great. We'll leave it as that. Yeah. Uh, do you regret cutting a hole on your specialized cycling shoe? No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, I think it's the best thing, best advice ever. Yeah. Really, really. I mean, because to me, the functionality, you know, much as I'm also vain about my equipment and stuff, I think functionality is still first mm. for me. So no, definitely not. Everyone should try it if you have bunions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last, okay, I wouldn't say this is a question, but a compliment. Uh, the, the first question was why ATOS and not the Timex? We've already answered that. Yes. Uh, but he says it's nice color. Is this yes! like a pink lilac? I love this color. <laughs> it is It is like more like a baby pink. Yeah. Right. So that was like a huge thing for me also, right? When I was, mm. I was like, the ethos comes in this beautiful color. Like actually the only two colors that I really would like on a bike, maybe three, mm. white, pink, mint. Yeah. Then, sorry, everything else is like a second, <laughs> second tier choice. Yeah. Right. So I was like, I actually wanted like white or pink first. Right. And then they had this like such a nice shoe of pink. I was like, yes. It is a very So nice thank you for the color. compliment. I, I I love the color. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever get another specialized or whichever new bike you get, I uh, hope you come on to my show again. I hope so too. <laughs> I hope I Hopefully so it doesn't too. take one year. <laughs> Jade is very, very, very busy. She just came back from China. She, I, I don't know where she's going to go tomorrow. <laughs> but I would need to get a new bike to come back on the show. So that means I would have to like- Invest. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure someone else will sponsor you a bike. I don't know. I I, I am looking, I am saying, I'm, I'm not looking, looking, but I'm curious. I'm yeah. curious. And the next one, I want a white bike. A white bike. A white bike. Anyone out there? A uh, white bike for, for Jade? A white Aero TT white. bike. Oh, uh, very demanding. Huh? White yeah. Aero TT. Very specific. I mean, if you ask like what I'm looking for that would be because I'm like I'm pretty happy with this yeah right so if, if anything like these are a few things that I would look for right yeah. uh, before I wrap up I, yes. uh, anything you would like to any plugs oh. anything you would like to say oh many plugs <laughs> go, go ahead firstly thank you everyone who has said hi to me on the roads and the cycling community has been so nice uh, so I have people right where I like when it's like very bright I actually ninja up I cover my whole face oh, yeah. from the sun mm. I got to maintain like, right? like, I'm not getting any younger <laughs> and then I have like people who actually tap me on the shoulder and like hi Jade I'm like how'd you know it's me <laughs> <laughs> right, I guess boys and girls they see yeah. the bike star right um, yeah so thank you for everyone who's helped me or giving me suggestions to all my friends also who have helped me along the way this really really very noob beginner I cannot believe I'm sitting here with you I feel very unqualified to be here <laughs> right? but for all beginners please don't be scared to get started yeah. uh, please follow my YouTube channel Jade's here official please also watch my live stream if you guys want to shop nice things <laughs> it's Kaki Kaki Live K-A-K-I-K-A-K-I-L-I-V-E otherwise I will see you guys on Instagram or like on this space as well. Thank you so much, Jade, for coming. Thank and, you. Uh, very humble to have you here. And th- uh, again, really. I'm you. very humble. <laughs> thank you so much for coming and a uh, round of applause for Jade. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.